Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, so as Pastor, as I mentioned earlier, Pastor Josh got us started on this sermon series last week, Promised Treasures, uh, where we were looking at uh, just normal, everyday, practical things in which God uh, delivers, uh, as the series is referring to them, as to, to treasures, his promises to us. And so I had salt last week, and, and tonight, as I mentioned, I've, I've got water, right? And, and he and I, he and I were talking, and uh, he just noted how the water one was easy. He said it practically writes itself, and salt was a bit of a bit of a challenge more in that. But uh, and I would agree, water's easy. We're going to talk about it tonight. Let's talk about water in general at first, though, right? So they just bottle of plain water, uh, and I I'm going to ask you a question in a second, but I don't want you to jump to the church answers yet. All right? We always ask a question, and you guys jump to the churchy answers right away. Just just hold tight. Okay, so water, what do you, we use it for everything, right? What are some things we use it for? Ooh, okay, good, hold on. What here? Drink. To drink, okay, so I could, I could drink this, what else? Shower. Shower, cooking. bathe, cooking, like right, give me, give me more specific with cooking. How are the, what are, I mean, there's all sorts of ways you can cook with water. Boil. Boil. Steam, right? I, okay. Um, just soak stuff, like I soak beans overnight in water, right? So there's just, I mean, okay, what else? Ice. What's it? Coffee. Coffee, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's like, yeah, good. All right, and I like that. What are some of the things we make? So, yeah, we said drink, but more specifically, coffee. What are some other, you know, get as specific as you want. You think water. What do you, what? Ice. 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 Good. We're going to talk about ice later. Ice is a good one. All right, what else? Water the yard. Water the yard. Yard? Wash clothes. Wash clothes. Bathe. Who? Bathe. Bathe, yeah. All right? It could be shower, it could be the tub. I mean, there's just, we, we could be here all night talking about the different things. Nobody mentioned snow cones, but, but you got to have snow cones. Slushes, right? Did, he, did you say you like snow cones? All right, we're glad we have water, right? It's amazing. Uh, from a chemical perspective, water is also pretty remarkable. If uh, I'm not going to go into the details, but as I did some of the research for this, um, you know, so water is a, is a compound, right? It's made up of what? What, what elements? Hydrogen. Hydrogen and oxygen, right? So it's combined, and and other similar type compounds that are there. And they talked about the point at which when you heat them up. So what happens to water when we heat it up? It turns into steam, right? Well, to get it to that point, if you're talking Celsius scale, if we're talking what temperature? Something like 100 degrees, right? That's higher than most of the other elements or compounds, rather, that are at that point. Same thing with freezing it. It takes a lot more energy to get up to there than similar type compounds. So, so part of the note is, is, is how much energy it takes to go to. So it's an energy thing. It takes a lot of energy to get it to do either of those things, either to turn into steam or turn into ice. Okay, uh, so it's a unique thing. Uh, it's considered a universal solvent, meaning it will, this is why we use it for washing. It, if you got something you need to rinse, you, you throw water on it because water will probably get rid of, get, get rid of this, whatever it is that's the problem. Um, let's talk about something else. And I, I knew this for a long time and it always fascinated me. So in general, when we cool something, when something cools, does it get less dense or more dense? Does it get, yeah, you're looking at me funny, all right. Generally, when you cool it, it, the density increases. So for example, if you cool air, it will sink, right? So think about that, for example, when you go the opposite direction, steam, the heat excites the chemical, the, 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 the elements within it, and, and it turns into steam. That's why it expands so much. That's why there's pressure buildup and all those things. Well. So the air, we cool the air and it sinks, it's why cold air is at the bottom. But water, well, so water does very similar, right? You think about in the lake, where's the coldest water going to generally be in a, in a body of water? It's going to be at the bottom unless there's some sort of cycle, but the water, cold water will sink until something else happens. Now, let's follow this though. If, if water did always did like, like everything else does in it, what happens to water when it gets cold enough, it will eventually freeze and 
generally stuff that gets colder and colder gets denser and denser. And so water should do what when it freezes? It should, should sink. But what does it do? What do your ice cubes do in their iced tea? It floats because at four degrees Celsius, all those molecules that were getting tighter and tighter together all of a sudden rearrange themselves, start to rearrange themselves, and it actually increases, or de the density decreases, and the ice gets, gets less dense, and so what happens to the ice? It floats. Now you think, Pastor, why are you going at this lengthy chemistry lesson tonight? How many of you like to have fish in the lakes? A lot, all of us do, or any body of water. And if ice didn't do that, if ice didn't get less dense and float, now this may not be an issue for us down here, but think about those poor fish in those northern lakes. If ice sank, what would happen to all those fish? They'd get trapped. Because as the first layer gets cold enough and starts freezing and sinking, then the next layer, and before long, what's going to happen to all the poor fish at the bottom trapped under all that ice? They're going to die. So I think it's remarkable that God has designed it to be such a way that that ice, which, and, and the water, rather, which covers a huge percentage of our, of our planet, when it freezes, gets less dense, floats to the top, thereby protecting the critters underneath. Okay? All of that. Lengthy discussion, I know. To point out that water is amazing. Right? We use it for so many things uh, in our lives each and every day, and it is just, uh, it's, it's a remarkable thing that God has created. Now, that's not why you're here, though, tonight. Right? So as much as we have all of that, and as, as remarkable as it is, how does God use water, more specifically? Okay? Our Old Testament reading showed us something today. Uh, we, we read about the flood and what happened as, as water covered the earth. And by the way, how, did you catch how deep it was? It, the water covered 15 cubits higher than the highest mountain. Does any, you want to add, check out cubits on your calculator and see? All right, does anybody know how deep, how much higher that was in the mountains? It was about 20 feet. So the water covered the earth 20 feet higher than any other mountain. And, and what does the scripture say happened to every living thing on the earth that had the breath of life in it, except for those that were on the ark? What happened? They died. Why? This was God's judgment, right? The earth had become corrupt. The good earth that God had made had gotten worse and worse and worse. And God said, that's enough. And he covers the entire planet with water and everything dies. And it's remarkable as you read that passage of scripture to see how thorough it is in describing all the different types of animals and very specific about the dates and the times and all of that kind of stuff right and very specific about who is saved who is okay noah and his family eight souls and all right two of every kind of animal male and female they are brought on the ark and saved and so in that particular story you have an example first of god's judgment and also god's salvation two things happening with water in that event of the flood think of the other times it's happened scripture talks about um, uh, when when moses and the israelites are getting uh, escaping egypt right they get to the red sea and what does god do he he has the waters parted and and it's, it's fascinating to read again they're crossing over and it says they crossed on dry land so god on dry land god has separated the waters he's done it to such an extent that there's dry ground easy for the israelites to get through on but what happens as they get to the other side and pharaoh begins to pursue them what does he use the water to do once again he destroys pharaoh so so in this story once again god is saving his people as he parts the water as he makes it okay but then he uses the same water to to destroy to have to, to pronounce judgment on god's enemies All right so story after story we see god using water to to, to judge part of his creation at some point in time, or all of the creation with the, with the Noah story. But we know he also does other amazing things with us when we think about just this little bit of water. Peter, in that second reading today, who, Peter, the one who walked on water, right, who, was, who fell in as he doubted, was pulled out by Jesus. Peter notes in the reading today that as Noah and his family were rescued through the flood, he says, baptism corresponds to this. 
He reminds us of the rescue, that the rescuing of Noah, as much as there was destruction in the flood, God was working to save his people, and that in baptism, he saves us. Romans 6 tells us that, and we use that Romans 6 passage at every, at every funeral. We're going we're to read it again tomorrow for Mr. Fritchie's funeral and Saturday, or Friday rather, for Mr. Dramer's. Romans 6 reminds us that through baptism, through the waters that we use in that font or whatever font it is, that we are joined to Jesus. And that as you're joined to Jesus, Romans 6 says that just as Jesus died and rose again, because of those waters, so will you. That's the promise that God has made. It reminds us that every single day, Luther talk, spoke of it this way, every single day the old sinful Adam in us is drowned. Right? We struggle with sin each and every day. I do, and I know you do too. We struggle with sin each and every day, and the promise, the reminder is, is that we remember those waters of baptism and that our old sinful self, the old Adam, is drowned in those waters. Judgment is pronounced. And the old Adam is killed. But in those same waters, God's promise of life is there for you as you are raised. Just like they said in that Romans 6, just as Jesus died and rose again, so will you. And of course, it points to the greater promise of the resurrection. Because those waters clothe you with the holiness, the goodness of Jesus. That's the gift given through those waters. That's the promise given there. And it's an amazing promise. Just as Jesus died and rose again, so will you. That is Good Friday and Easter, all in that little bit of water that's sprinkled on your head. Maybe you were dunked, I don't know how you were baptized, but as whatever bit of water was there, and as the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, you become a child of hope. You're a child that receives that promise. All of a sudden, hallelujah, Christ is risen. I know we're not supposed to say alleluia's right now, but we'll sneak them in a little early from Easter. That promise is yours. Resurrection is yours. So no matter what happens in this life, that promise has been delivered to you through this amazing, simple thing that we have over all the planet. And God has made it an amazing promise through him, and he is faithful, and he will deliver. Not because... He did anything right. Matter of fact, the promise here is greatest when you recognize he gives it because of everything you have done wrong. Because of everything good that Jesus has done. And that Jesus, through this water, washes that sin away and all of the goodness and, uh, and holiness of Jesus is yours. So, we use water for a whole lot of stuff. And my hope is that each day, all those times you use water, maybe you'll think about this a little bit and remember the amazing promise God has made, a promise of life and salvation through Jesus. In his name, amen.